Okay, now once you've opened up that, um, once you've opened up that reference sheet, I want you to notice what I mentioned yesterday. Namely, what's there? Um, particularly the form that it's in. What are the, um, well, this, I was going to say peculiarities, but one of the necessities of the reference sheet is that they're not going to give you um, each of the formulas or uh, quotable things in exactly the same form that you'd necessarily be familiar with. A classic example is, I think, where the, the quotient rule is stated. Yeah. Uh, the quotient rule is stated in an accurate, but a very obtuse long form. Um, certainly much longer than VU dash plus U V dash on V squared. Um, they're done it that way because it's more informative to put it that way than U dash, but less memorable. Now, the um, it's, it's kind of similar for the um, Equations for simple harmonic motion. They've got your, I think, like I said, they've got cosine there instead of sine, not that that matters. Uh, and their, their naming of the coefficients of the constants is a little bit different. But the important thing is that you recognize, okay, this is the basic form of it. There are, how many things can we change? We can change amplitude, we can change frequency, we can change, phase. We can change phase, where you start from. And there's one more thing. We've already said, well, we said for, uh, frequency, which is period. The center of motion, very good. So you have four things, and so there's those four constants there. I can't remember what they name them. Probably A, B, N, and alpha, I'm guessing. Something like that. Yeah, so um, you can call them anything you want, clearly. And a, an HSC question could absolutely, you know, give them different labels or whatever, but you, you just recognize what's going on. So, um, you might remember yesterday in 3D, I did an unusual thing, and I think I said one to, one to seven. Yeah, I think I said... Um, oh, that's a bit naughty, I haven't written down yet. Um, I said one to seven, I said all of them, and we did one together. Part of the reason for that is because when we have a look at these later questions, um, there are some weird things that are going to spin you out a little bit. So, I'm going to begin with question nine. So, if you want to pull it up there in front of you, um, that would be helpful. So, you're not constantly um, relying on me telling you what the question is. The first thing we're going to do <coughs> is interpret this question, okay? Because um, I've, been, I've been banging on this drum that the hard thing about um, everything in applications of calculus to the physical world is interpreting and knowing what to do. Um, I think I just mentioned it to these guys up the front that um, <laughs> in applications of calculus to the physical world, you're differentiating, you're integrating. You're differentiating, integrating usually quite pleasant functions. You know, exponential is really easy to work with. Um, trig functions, really easy to work with. Um, and then you're substituting values. And that's it. That's the length and breadth of, like there's no crazy weird conceptual stuff to wrap your head around. The numbers are really easy, but interpreting the words, that's hard. Okay, so read with me, question nine. And as we go through, I want you to point out to me, just stop me, when you find a piece of information that you think is worth me writing down after the set of the question. So here it goes. A particle is traveling in simple harmonic motion about the origin with, aha, okay, thank you. First one, about the origin. I think simple so, harmonic motion is also important. That, that, yeah, that's true. Okay, cool. We can't do anything with this question unless we know that. Um, of course, when they say about the origin, what they're referring to there is the symmetry of this movement. So that's your um, center of motion. Yes? Continue going. With period 24 seconds. Period 24 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Period 24 seconds. And amplitude 120 meters. Okay, so lots of important details there. Very dense. Is it 240? Is it? No, 120. 120. Why am I doubling this? <laughs> um, that's the range of motion. So it means. <clears throat> Continuing. Initially, it's at the origin. Initially. <laughs> okay, so let's let's turn this into some um, some um, algebra for us, right? So at t equals or when when t equals zero, rather. When t equals zero? V is positive. Okay, so hold on a second. The first thing I'm saying is initially it's at the origin. So the first thing you're going to say is when t equals zero, x equals zero, that means at the origin. And then they've said, <coughs> excuse me, it says moving forwards. Now, interestingly, they don't say moving in a... They haven't attached sign to this, okay? Now, uh, as in positive, negative. So therefore, I could attach whatever sign to it I like, okay? Now, they've said moving forwards. I suppose it would make sense to us to define forwards as 
positive, right? So if we say, I'm going to put this here, define forwards as positive. Okay, I like to say that, well, I don't just like to say that. If they don't tell me, I always make a statement of what is what. Um, when it's something like forwards and backwards, it's fairly obvious. But, you know, in other cases, when we have a look at particularly um, projectiles that move up and down, all that kind of thing, sometimes you want um, to have things reversed from what they normally would be. Makes the numbers easier sometimes. Okay, there are all our essential details. Okay, so we've got them down. Let's actually start answering these questions.